These are this afternoon's top stories. Prime Minister Harris delivers feature address at SKNDF passing out ceremony. People may soon be able to apply for the CARICOM skills certificates online. And the captain of the ship wrecked in the Mediterranean has appeared before court. Good afternoon and welcome to ZIZ's Midday Newscast. Today is Friday, April 24th. 2015, I am J.D. Keynes. Nationally, on Thursday afternoon, Prime Minister Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris delivered the feature address at the passing out ceremony of the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force Basic Military Course Number 16, where 15 recruits graduated to the first rank of private soldiers. He commended the graduates on their perseverance and success. I am certain that at the commencement of your training in October 2014, you were told that the journey on which you were about to embark on was a tedious and challenging one, and not for the faint-hearted. But today, you have demonstrated your worth. The Prime Minister specifically praised the female graduates, noting that the top three spots for best performance during the course went to females. The exceptional performance of the best student awardee has resulted in her being selected and sent to Guyana to attend the Colonel Ulrich Pilgrim Officers Training School. If she were to successfully complete that course, she will be commissioned as a second lieutenant and will earn the distinction of becoming the first Kittishan female to graduate from that prestigious officer's training school. Give her another round of applause. The passing out ceremony was held at the SKNDF headquarters at Camp Springfield. St. Kitts is this week hosting the Air Force Reserve Command's WC-130J aircraft, dubbed the Hurricane Hunter, at the Robert L. Bratcher International Airport. The visit is part of the St. Christopher Air and Seaports Authority's 2015 Hurricane Awareness Initiative and the U.S. Air Force Reserve's Caribbean Hurricane Awareness Tour. On Friday, government officials, media, and high school students got a chance to tour the aircraft and learn about the role it plays in tracking hurricanes. On Thursday night, the government hosted a cocktail reception at the Marriott Resort for the visiting meteorological team. Director of the Caribbean Meteorological Organization, Tyrone Sutherland, said their visit aims to boost public awareness about their work. What we're doing this year, as we do every year, we, before our hurricane season, we organize these tours to some different parts of the region as a public gesture so that they understand what we do, understand the brave, heroic acts of our men and, and women. The aircraft flies directly into the core of tropical cyclones to gather data for forecasting a hurricane's intensity and landfall. The data is sent in real time via satellite to the National Hurricane Center for analysis and use by meteorolo meteorologists. During the 2014 hurricane season, the Hurricane Hunter flew 52 missions, including 13 investigative flights over the Atlantic for the National Hurricane Center. Acting Commissioner of Police Stafford Liburd is calling on residents of St. Kitts and Nevis to become members of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. This week, Liburd described the profession as rewarding and encouraged persons to apply. If you are interested in serving your country, if you are interested in a rewarding career, if you want to make a difference, the police force is hiring. Regionally, Persons seeking CARICOM skills certificates may soon be able to do so online. Those seeking skills certificates to work within CARICOM may soon be able to do so online. Ministers of Trade of the Caribbean Community CARICOM are meeting in Georgetown. At the opening of the meeting at the Pegasus Hotel, Secretary General Erwin LaRox and the Secretariat is continuing its quest to improve the efficiency of the processes of the single market and economy through the CARICOM Trade and Competitiveness Project, funded by Canada. This project, he said, could make access and free movement of skills certificates easier. That project would transform and harmonize the administrative practices and procedures under the five regimes of the CSME, and would also provide for the application of web-based technology. Once this council takes the necessary decisions, those seeking skills certificates, for example, 
will be able to do so online in any member state. Ambassador LaRock placed emphasis on the progress being made on the CSME in the face of challenges the community continues to face as a result of the volatile global economic environment. In our ceaseless efforts to boost our growth and economic prospects, utilizing the provisions of the CSME to its fullest provides us with the best option. It will allow us to exploit the full potential of our human resources as our skilled personnel move freely throughout the community. The easier movement of capital would help to generate much needed investment. Our trade in goods and services can only be enhanced by the removal of whatever restrictions still remain. Matters related to the CARICOM single market and economy are among the key agenda items of the 40th meeting of the CARICOM Council for Trade and Economic Members of the visually impaired community in Trinidad registered their displeasure yesterday over alleged neglect. They say those who are supposed to be seeking their interests have disregarded their concerns. A group of workers stood outside the Blind Welfare Association building's locked gate on Thursday demanding an update on their status. As you, the majority of the audience, view this story, the subjects of this story listen intently. Fate would have it that their sight is impaired, but that doesn't curtail their vision. They, workers at the Blind Welfare Association, still harbor hopes of self-improvement and for a bigger cause, the quest for equality. But now they say both are in danger of being compromised. They say on October 16th last year, it was agreed that the Blind Welfare Association building would be closed until health and safety issues were addressed. It's over six months now. We are not hearing anything from management. We don't know what is going on. Only the final when we came here, that they have been doing business as usual. When we came yesterday, when we came back this morning, the place is locked. The building where they earn their living is about to be rented out, they say. In addition to the main building, they have heard that the carpenter shop will also be rented out. The workers say they are also owed years of retroactive payments, and they wondered how the government could find the time and funds to fund other initiatives, but not attend to their issues. Just as now we are handing out hampers and, and, and baby grants, we want our money too. We, have, we are people too, and we have to survive. We have bills to pay. Right? We have to live. The workers say this is just another instance of people with disabilities being neglected by the state. If you get to know us a little better, then you would understand, understand the situation. We're not asking for sympathy, no. we just want to be treated equal. 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 Joshua Simongal, TV6 News. Internationally, a man believed to be the captain of a shipwreck that killed hundreds of migrants appeared in a Sicily court with a fellow crew member. Nathan Frondino reports. Prosecutors want Tunisian Mohammed Ali Malik and Syrian Mahmoud Bakit to be charged with multiple homicide and people trafficking offenses. Malik is said to have been the captain of the boat which sank off Libya last Sunday Bikit has been identified as a crew member. Both appeared in court to face charges. The two are accused of being responsible for the deaths of up to 900 African and Bangladeshi migrants believed to have died when the boat capsized in the Mediterranean. The disaster has sparked outrage across Europe and prompted EU leaders to triple naval search missions called Operation Triton on the Mediterranean. Save the Children's spokesperson Gemma Parkin says more needs to be done. It's a case of one step forward and two steps back. Obviously the um, increase of budget, the tripling of uh, Triton's budget and the national offers um, of search and rescue capacity are great breakthroughs, really critical breakthroughs. But without the clarity about Triton's operational area, then lives will continue to be risked at sea. Meanwhile, more migrants continue to arrive. Italian officials believe the number of migrants crossing the sea could reach 200,000 this year. Armenia is mourning the massacre of 1.5 million people by Ottoman Turks a century ago. Paul Chapman reports. It's been a hundred years since Ottoman Turks massacred 1.5 million Armenians, but the wounds are still raw. 
This year's centennial commemorations in Yerevan, the Armenian capital, drew an international gathering. Delegates included the presidents of Russia, France, Serbia and Cyprus. Armenia wants the bloodshed recognized internationally as genocide. Most Western experts and two dozen governments have done so. Germany's president on Thursday became the latest to use the term despite the Berlin government's long-standing rejection of it. Others, including the United States, have refused to go so far. Turkey insists the deaths weren't part of an organised campaign to wipe out the Armenians and there's no evidence of any such orders from Ottoman authorities. And now for the weather. Today will be mostly sunny with little or no showers. Tonight is expected to be fair to partly cloudy. Winds will blow from the east southeast to south to will blow from the east southeast to southeast at 5 to 12 miles per hour. Seas are slight to moderate with waves of 1.2 to 1.8 meters or 4 to 6 feet. Temperatures will reach a high of 30 degrees Celsius. Today with a nighttime low of 24 degrees. The weather presentation brings us to the end of ZIZ's Midday Newscast. Join us this evening for the details of these stories and more in our major news package. I have been your presenter, J.D. Keynes. Have a great afternoon.